welcome to the Sports Outlet. Today we have a more hands-on um, approach to what we're talking about. We want to talk about Ultimate Frisbee today. We usually talk about baseball, football, basketball, professional, or college, but um, uh, we don't really get to talk about the sport that I play right now, and my favorite sport now, which is Ultimate Frisbee. I'm joined here by MJ, um, who's also part of LTV and part of the Ultimate Frisbee team, so um, we, we, we do both here on campus. Uh, we just want to do a small tutorial, a short tutorial, and just about the basics, teach people about the game, because I know a lot of people don't really know about the game. Um, just see it being played casually, or maybe see something on ESPN once in a while, but it's a really cool sport that should get a lot more attention. Um, recently it got um, acknowledged by the Olympic Committee, didn't mm -hmm. it? Um, I, th I believe so, yeah. Yeah, to, play, to maybe be in play for 20, what, uh, 24 maybe? Yeah, I think so, the next Summer Olympics. Yeah, so. exactly, so, so we'll see. Yeah, like, not the next one, but the next one after. So mm -hmm. um, we want to go over uh, just basic things. So we should start with throwing, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. um, your good. first throw um, that you have is called a backhand. You want to pull it with your dominant hand. You want to set what's called a pivot with your non-dominant foot. So my, so my left foot, because I'm a righty, um, you want to put your four fingers behind the disc and your thumb on top of it, which is really important. You don't want your pointer here because that's it, it takes away from the power of the throw. You want to have your four fingers. Um, you can have them. You want them like pretty close together. And you want your thumb on top to lead the disc, so like so it can go anywhere in any direction. Um, then you want to set this. You can't move this foot, or else it's called a travel, like in basketball. Um, you want to set it, and then that means you can move your other foot in any direction. Um, if, let's say I'm going to throw the disc to MJ. I want to set my pivot foot. I want to step out away from my defender, and I want to throw a backhand. And I want it to be a horizontal throw it doesn't, so it doesn't wobble. Um, you want it to go like this. Um, and MJ, as you saw, caught it with two hands, called cla um, clapping the disc. Clapping the disc, yep. Um, very important. It's much easier to catch it like this. Because stuff how you take your eye off of it, this is really good for catching in the body. So again, you want to put your fingers behind here, um, and you want to have your thumb on top, and you want to step out. You want to step out and twist your body. It's very important to twist your body so you can get a lot of power on the throw. Um, I know we're in a closed space right now, but in real game, you're throwing farther, dis longer distances. Mm -hmm. So you want to get like a lot of power, and you want to use it with your shoulder. You want to get that with your shoulder and with your hips. You really want to turn around and get that. Um, anything else for a backhand, MJ? Well, I think you pretty much covered it. Okay, so you're going to talk about uh, flick now. Right, so, throw. right, so flick, uh, it's typically the harder throw yeah. out of all of them. Um, it's when you step out the other way, instead of twisting your body this way, you're going to step out this way. And typically what I like to do when I hold a flick, I have my two fingers like right under here, gripping the side of the disc, like a backhand, we have the thumb on top. And one thing important to realize when you're throwing a flick, you're not throwing with your arm, you're throwing with your wrist. It's really just a flick of the wrist, so what you like to do, like Otto said, step out with your right foot, you set a pivot, and then just like that. Yeah, and, you, and again, it's called a flick for a very obvious reason. You're flicking your wrist, you're not using your arm. Like you said, like we were talking about before, you, you do this drill, right, where you hold your, your arm behind, mm -hmm. um, so you, you only use your wrist, which is really interesting. Um, and as you mentioned, that's a really good point. Uh, starters of the game, everybody knows how to throw a backhand, or at least that's your natural throw, mm -hmm. but nobody but you have to be taught how to throw a flick. So that's usually the problem with the freshmen who start playing. Mm -hmm. We gotta teach them how to throw a flick. Which yeah. is very important because um, as a defender, you can make them throw a flick. And if they can't, how are they gonna move the disc? Exactly. You know? So you wanna step out, um, you wanna open your body, and again, twist your whole, your whole like, you wanna rotate and flick your wrist for, um, for a flick. Now, again, it's harder to throw one in, indoors or like such a short distance, um, but to get good power on it when you're throwing outside, you really want to flick your wrist real hard and direct it and, and keep it open. So, so one thing you can do to keep practicing that by yourself is not even with a frisbee, you just want to keep flicking your wrist just continuously. Um, anything else for the flick or for offense that you want to um, Really just about? the important thing, if you want to get better at your throws, just go outside, find a friend who wants to get better like you. Just keep throwing every day, you know? Yeah. And it's best to do like each throw every time. So do backhand like 10 times. Yep. Do a flick ten times and then switch and then and then do different throws. Um, the other thing, so we're talking about offense right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's talk about a little rules, some rules of the game. Mm -hmm. um, there's what's called a stall count, um, similar to a shot clock, a basketball play clock in, in football. Um, if you have the disc, the defender will count down, ten, will really count up ten seconds, mm -hmm. saying stall one, stall two, and that's the time you have to throw the frisbee to your to another teammate. If the defender 
counts the entire 10 seconds as an automatic turnover. So you have 10 seconds, which seems like a short amount of time, but it's a pretty pretty good time, and the defender has to count it out loud so you know what's yeah. so you know what's going on. So so um, so you have that, and uh, let's see other rules, basic rules. Um, seven players on a team. Mm -hmm. um, you try to score so score a goal. So you go from end zone to end zone, similar to football. Yeah. Um, you can't run with it. If you catch it running, you have to stop as soon as possible and then throw. Um, or else it's called a travel, like we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, I believe you covered most of the basic rules. Uh -huh. Obviously, don't foul, you know, like yes, basketball. Yes, no contact, right? No contact, yep. Um, the other, which brings me to a really excellent point. Um, another really important part of Frisbee is that it's self officiated mm -hmm. at least at the college level, at the, high, at the club level. Um, which means that players call their own fouls, which can get really interesting because people make mistakes, just like wrestling. Like people yeah. make mistakes, and there's bias, obviously, because you want you call things for yourself, you know. But that's a very important part of the of ultimate that um, you have what's called spirit of the game, and you make the correct calls even though you like it doesn't go your way, mm -hmm. um, which is really important. And it's something that uh, is hard to learn, um, but you pick it up seeing other guys do it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, to what defense sound? You want to talk about defense? Yeah, we can go into defense. Okay. So, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna defend MJ here, which is what's called a mark. So I'm, I I'm putting a mark on him, and when you put on a mark, you don't put him, you don't go in front of him. You pick one side, and the whole defense coordinates on this. So like, if I'll be on this side, I'm making him throw a backhand, right? I'm making him throw a backhand. That means that the defenders are gonna be on this side of him. Are gonna be on the backhand side. Because if MJ is going to try to throw it here, the other, his teammates are going to run this direction, right? Mm -hmm. So the defenders, the other teammates, are going to are going to try to take that away. Mm -hmm. So it's two. So it's like the team is almost divided into two, because um, you're you you you're do, so the mark is defending this part of the field. Yeah. Because if nobody was here, he would throw it this way, and then the other defenders are taking away the other side of the field. Mm -hmm. um, now, so that seems really like. Brilliant in, in practice because that means, oh, MJ can't throw it this way. Oh, the defenders can't get that way. But, I mean, the defenders could be better. I mean, the, the people cutting on offense could be better than the defenders and they could beat them. Or MJ might be able to get a throw around here some way or another or over the top or, or inside. So there, a lot of different things can happen. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so you want to say your mark. You want to be um, about 45 degrees. You don't want to be here and you don't want to be in front. So you want to be somewhere in the middle where he can't throw, so he tries to go inside, you try to put your arm here, or he tries to go the other way, you want to shuffle your feet, which is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're, you're making sure, you have to be at about disc space, um, about this, you can't be any closer, you can't bump into him, which is a foul. Yep. Um, and, uh, and you want to be stalling, so MJ's, MJ's trying to throw, I'm, I'm saying stall one, stall two, that's very important um, when you're throwing. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else on defense you want to cover? Uh, Do you want to cover uh, cutter defense? I think we can cover that, yeah. Okay. So, put the disc down, I guess. Um, so, MJ's going to be on defense here. Um, I'm going to be trying to run uh, that way. Mm -hmm. So, MJ's going uh, to try to stop me. If I try to run straight forward, MJ's going to go with me. He puts his arm out. He doesn't really make contact, but he, because he doesn't push me or shove me, but he's there. He impedes my progress. So, if I go here, I don't really have anything. and stick his arm out, whatever. Um, if, if I try to go through him, he's just going to put his body in front of me, and I can't get anywhere, so I'm, I'm stopped there. If I go backwards, that's okay, because the mark has that side of the field, ideally. Um, so, so that's how you try to cover the entire way of the field. Mm -hmm. What else you want to say? Um, I, think it's the, I think it's just important to always – like, the big thing with defense is just work hard. Yes. Like, that's how really, especially if you're a rookie, like it's your first time playing, yeah. like that's how you're going to get noticed if you make a big time D or even if you just like don't let your guy get the disc. Yeah. And that's something, oh, I'm sorry, and that's something that um, you can start playing, that, something you can do well right away. Um, you don't need any technical knowledge of the sport to be able to stay in front of anybody or be more athletic than them or try to stop the disc. So that's something you can do right off the bat, mm -hmm. right off the bat without any practice. I think you pretty much covered it right there. Uh, um, so, anything else we could talk about? Um, any other basic rules? Yeah, so we talked about fouls. Um, uh, yeah, so, so what you want to do to get better, um, because, the, because okay, so now I know the basic how to get better. You want to be playing. You want to be throwing. As MJ said, you want to be throwing all the time. You want to go outside. I mean, today's raining, right? So you can't do anything. 
outside, but you want to be throwing every single day. Try out different things. Even if you mess up when you're throwing, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because there's more than these two throws. So high-level players have like what's called a hammer over the top, a scuba this way. You can throw with your other hand for like a quick throw. You can do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So you need to practice all that, and that comes with time. Um, but and, and the other really important part about Frisbee is that, yeah, you can, you can be really technical with all your throws, with your cuts, but you need to know where, peop, where your teammates are going. You need to have really good team chemistry, and you need to like really pick your spots and have really good timing. Mm -hmm. That's important if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's just, like I said, it's important to get out there and practice like every day, work with your teammates, um, develop that kind of chemistry because we've, we play teams that like, you know, kind of just run around all over the place right. and it's pretty easy to like. And if can you throw it, but they just, it's just all crazy. There's no, yeah. there's no dynamic there. Exactly. You can, yeah. you can really, you can try to, what's called a huck, which is a really long throw. Mm -hmm. um, you can try to play that way and you, maybe if you have really good athletic players, they can go over the top and catch the disc. But a lot of teams play quick, um, catch, like give and goes. So I'll, I'll, I'll catch, I'll go to MJ, and then I'll cut right away for like a throw back to me, um, which, which is not like hard ultimate, you know. The throws are really easy, but, um, but, it, but it takes chemistry, and it takes a lot, of, uh, yeah. a lot of playing together to know how to do all that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we talked about the rules, we talked about the basic throws, uh, we talked about defense. Anything else you want to close um, this demonstration out with? Uh, I just think if you're going to come out and if you want to come out, just go out and play. It's a, it's a fun sport. Yeah. Try it. It's definitely a lot of fun. I've been playing it for like three, three and a half years yeah. now, and I absolutely love it. So don't yeah. be afraid to try it. I mean, it's a fun sport. And it's something, yeah, you can start playing college. Uh, we, both, we have a, both a men's and a women's team. Um, colleges have teams. There's pickup anywhere all over the state because Frisbee was invented in New Jersey, so um, – I'm sure there's all over the place. There's club teams that people play in after college. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways to stay active. And even at least you can buy a Frisbee anywhere. You can buy one from us. You can buy one from um, Amazon, wherever. Um, and you can just throw with your friends because it's really fun. It's something to do. Um, and you can organize it even if you don't really know how to play. Yeah. Um, I guess if you're just interested in coming out, you can email the TCNJ Ultimate email, which is just tcnjultimate at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, we're usually quick to answer, so we'll let you know when our practice schedule is and just... Yeah. Come out. We're a bunch of fun guys, and you know we love seeing new players. We love getting new players to come out. Yeah, and our spring season's coming up, which is um, really cool. Right after spring break, the beginning of April, we're going to be out back in Green Lane Fields. Um, it's going to be a, a good time, mm -hmm. um, and the weather's going to be beautiful. So um, that about wraps it up for uh, our ultimate demonstration, tutorial, whatever you want to say, or just general like uh, uh, speech about it. Um, yep. So. Cool. If you're joining, if you're interested in joining LTV, please like us on Facebook or email us at LTV at TCNJ uh, dot edu. Um, for Lions Television, Mike Joswick, I'm Otto Gomez. Have a good one, folks.